Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about the file formats. So we all are aware that the data is continuously rising, right? It's continuously on the rise and we have an exponential rise in the data. And because of that, a lot of methods are also coming up, right? Got evolved to store this data in an efficient manner. Today we'll be talking about how uh, the row and columnar uh, file formats are different from each other and we'll talk about some other examples as well. What is the newest formats that we are having in which we can store our data. So let's get started. So we are aware that the JSON and CSV files are very much common for storing data, right? But they were not designed uh, for the massive scale of big data. Why? Because they uh, usually uh, eat up a lot of resources unnecessarily because like if we talk about JSON files, we all are aware that in which we can have a nested data which is very much CPU intensive, right? So, but they are in a text format and therefore a human readable, right? But they lack the efficiencies offered by the binary options, right? So, this is the point like although we got some advantages available like with the, with the CSV files because uh, they are human readable, right? And but they do have some issues which I've already said like they can be a CPU intensive, right? So how we can now then cope up with the, all the problems, right? So data has been grown. We all are aware that file formats also got evolved. The file formats uh, may impact speeds and performance and can be a, a very much a key factor in determining uh, whether you want to wait for an hour for an answer or milliseconds. Usually we all want that when we run a query, right, we should get the result in no time, right? So matching your file format to your needs is very much crucial for minimizing the time it takes to the find the relevant data and also to get the meaningful insights from it. So today we'll be talking about uh, the two main ways in which we can organize our data. First is row wise, second is column wise. We all are aware that uh, we used to study in DBMS SQL that we have a tab table available which is consisting of rows and columns and generally we always store data row wise but we do have a, some we do have coming up with a lot of uh, new tools coming up which is storing data in a columnar fashion. So let's talk about how we are things are different from each other. So uh, this I've already said that if you want to choose your rows and columns right in which form, format you want to store data it largely depends upon how efficiently you want to store your query and st how efficiently you store and query your data. So very first uh, thing we are having is row, row format right. So we all are aware that the data is organized by record. We can think like it is a traditional way of organizing and managing data. All data associated with this, uh, with the specific record is stored adjacently, means like next to each other. First the once a one row got completed, next row will be added next to it, right? This is how we do it, right? So we, we can also say like the data of each row is arranged such, such that that last column of a row is stored next to the first column entry of a succeeding data row. This is how the data got stored. Let's talk about uh, with the help of one example. Let's suppose we have a data available, okay, in which we got five columns and we got uh, like uh, this uh, two rows available in which some data is available. So this is the this is how we can store this data like. Uh, like in a row format, right? We all are aware that we always st we will be storing data in this manner, uh, in this manner, right? One Michael Jones, Dallas 32, first row, then two Preston James, Boston 25, second row, right? And we can also represent the, uh, this row data visually in the order uh, in which it it will be stored in the memory. How? In this way, like one Michael Jonas, Jones, Dallas 32. Next to now, once you're last column is ending, the second row's first column is starting from here. This is how the data will be stored in a memory, right? How we can think like visually, right? So in this case, uh, this is how the things got stored in a, a row wise. But if we could talk about the columnar, okay? In columnar format, what we do? The values of each table column are stored next to each other. Let's take the same example. Now how we gonna store the same, uh, this data like which I shown you in the columnar fashion. We store in this way, like we have a ID, then both the IDs are together, first name Michael Preston, last name Jones, James, City, Dallas, Boston and A3225 respectively. So you can also represent this columnar data visually in the order, so in which it would be stored in the memory like this, one, two together, then Michael Preston, then Jones, James, Dallas, Boston and 3225. So choosing a format is all about ensuring your format matches your downstream intended use for the data. So let's talk about the first thing, the particulars of row formatting, right? 
So this is uh, the things that I've already shown you. Like this is how the data got stored in a row format. Like we have a first row available till 32, then next row start from here and got stored adjacently. So uh, there's a one advantage we get with this. Adding data, adding more to this data set is trivial. It means you just append any newly acquired data to the end of the current data set. Let's suppose I want to add the third row. So it's a, a three ME Clark Denver 37 got ad, uh, added to it, right? So we can say that row formatting is recommended for any case in which you have a write heavy operations, okay? However, the read operations can be very inefficient. Let's take one example. Uh, so I want to obtain the sum of the ages for an individuals in this data. So simple, uh, the simple task can be uh, compute intensive with a row oriented database because we all are aware that the ages are not stored in a common location within a memory. It means I need to load all the 15 data points 1, 2, 3, 4 till 15 uh, into a memory then extract the relevant data to perform all the required operation like from this 15 data points first I'll be extracting 32, 25, 37 and then I do the sum. Now let's imagine that if we have a millions or billions of data points Okay, stored across numerous disks because of their scale. If we take the same example, let's suppose we have a three disk available and suppose that the, di uh, the disk can only hold up for five data points. And in this case, we have shown that a simple sample data set is split across three storage disk. So we need to load all the data in all the disk to obtain necessary information for our query. And if each disk is filled to the capacity with the data, you can easily require extra memory utilization and the query become burdensome, right? This is the issue with the row oriented databases like or row oriented things like it is good for heavy, uh, write heavy operations, but it's not good for the reading purpose, right? Now let's go to the next one. So this one, if the data is wide, that is the, it has many columns and it is a write heavy, a row based format may be a best but not good for the reading purpose. Now let's talk about the particulars of columnar formatting now, right? The same example, right? In this case, the data is grouped in the terms like ID, first name, last name, city, age, right? So writing data is somewhat more time intensive in the columnar formatted data that it is in a row formatted data. It means now the uh, there's an issue with the columnar is that it is not, it's in this case, the writing will be more difficult. In the case of row oriented, the writing was easy, but in this case, writing is a little bit difficult. Instead of uh, just appending to the end of the row, as in the row base format, uh, we need to read in the entire data set, navigate to the appropriate positions and make the proper insertions. How? Like you can see now, like we know that one, two, because it was an ID, was stored together in the columnar uh, oriented stuff. So we need to insert three here, okay? It means I need to navigate to the appropriate positions and then I can do the proper insertions. So writing is difficult in this case. So navigating to the appropriate, appropriate positions for insertion is wasteful. But the way the data is partitioned across the multiple uh, disk can elevate this. If we take the same example, same framework as with the row formatted data, suppose we have a separate storage location for each attribute, right? So it still take a large amount of memory and computational time writing to the five separate locations to add data for the third individual, like three ME Clark Denver 37. However, you are simply appending to the end of the file stored in a, each of the locations. So the columnar format doesn't compare uh, like favorably to the row formatting with regards to write operations, but it is superior for read operations such as querying data. Let's take a same example. For example, we again, we need to uh, obtain the sum of the uh, ages for individuals in the data. To accomplish this, so you just have to go only to the storage location which contain information on the ages. So in this case, if you can see in the previous one, which I shown you, right, if I can show you, only I have to go to the disk five. Why disk five? Because disk five contain all the ages, right, to, to, to read the necessary data. So this saves a large amount of memory and time by skipping over non-relevant data very quickly, right? So in this case, I'll be getting some easy. So in this case, we can say all reads came from the sequential data stored on a single disk. So, but efficient querying is not only the only reason uh, the columnar formatted data is popular, right? So columnar formatted data also allow us for the efficient compression as well, right? So we'll talk about this in more detail in next video, but I just want to conclude this video like uh, 
we cannot compare it with the row formatting uh, with the with regard to the write operations but it's superior for the read operations such as querying data so this uh, this is uh, this concludes this this video in which i just have compared the uh, columnar one with the row one so uh, the row have some issues like row is good for the write operations not good for the reading in uh, against the columnar one uh, in which the writing is difficult but read is easy but we can also add to it i'm just adding to it like columnar formatted data also allows us for a also allow for the efficient compression so i'll be talking about these formats which i'm talking about uh, in the next video like the, with the likes of evro uh, parquet right uh, so other formats i'll be talking about in next video i hope you must have understood the concepts about the uh, how how the file formats are different from each other the row one versus the column one if you have any question for me just just comment on this video i'll be happy to answer your questions thanks for watching guys see you in next video